over the next uh, decade, two decades, it is uh, expected that there will be $150 billion worth of oil and gas extracted off your coast. It's an extraordinary figure. But think of it in practical terms. That means, according to many experts, more than 2 billion tonnes of carbon emissions will come from your seabed, from those reserves, and be released into the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you as a head of state went to the COP Let me in stop Dubai. You right there. Let me stop you right there. Do you know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined, a forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon, a forest that we have kept alive, a forest that we have kept alive. Does that give you the right? No, does no, that no, no, give no. you I, the that, right that, to release that all of this carbon? Right? Does from... that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change, I am going to lecture you on climate change because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, that the people of Ghana has kept alive. Guess what? We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. And guess what? Even with our greatest exploration of the oil and gas resource we have now, we will still be uh, net zero. Guyana will still be net zero. With all our exploration, a couple of we'll points. still be net zero. No, no, there's no, no powerful, no, powerful no, no, words, no, no, no. Mr. President. Well, 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 but a, a I, I'm not completed as yet. I am not finished as yet. I am just not finished as yet because this is the hypocrisy that exists in the world. We, the world, in the last 50 years has lost 65 percent of all its biodiversity. We have kept our biodiversity. Are you valuing it? Are you ready to pay for it? When is the developed world going well, to pay for it? Or are you, you in the pockets? You, are you in the pockets of those who have damaged the environment? Are you in the pockets? Are you and your system in the pockets of those who destroyed the environment through the industrial revolution and now lecturing us? Are you in their pockets? Are you paid by them? Are you all paid right, to keep right, their Mr. message? Okay, so that was the uh, that was Guyana's president, Dr. Irfan Ali, responding to a BBC presenter who had the tenac who had the temerity to tell him what he could and couldn't do with his own country's oil reserves. It is good to see. A president of the global majority uh, sticking up for his country himself. Put way too much glue on that one, but give this one a try. Um, yes, Guyana has had a complicated colonial history. It was originally three different. Uh, colonies that were founded by the, uh, founded by the Dutch, I suppose you could say. Yeah, yeah, founded by the Dutch in the um, 1600s during the uh, 80s year, 80 year war. The colonies originally used African slaves to produce coffee, sugar, cotton and tobacco. Uh, it didn't go very well, obviously it didn't go very well for the, um, the native inhabitants, the indigenous inhabitants of the region. And many suffered from uh, western diseases that had been brought over by the Europeans, while many others were forcibly displaced as, they, as the Europeans searched for more land to use. Um, what else do I have in my notes? Uh, yep, yeah, the Africans were used as slave labour, but the poor, poor conditions obviously led to uh, slave results, and there were over a dozen of them. The most significant of which was the Burbies slave uprising of 1763, which almost won the colony its independence from the Dutch. But it was pressed uh, with the aid of other European powers in the region, Britain and France. As the Dutch continued to expand their operations in the area, in the colony, they tried to attract um, more settlers 
and they opened it up to British immigrants. And by the 1760s, uh, the majority of the European population in the region of Demir, Demir, Demirara, Demirara, or British, that's one of the um, three core uh, parts of the colony, one of the main settlements that was founded. What else do I have in my notes? Um, yeah, this is really going over just a, a history of Diana individually as a colony, and it is put up with a lot from Europeans, um, particularly the British and the Dutch. Yep, yeah, with the British. It uh, became, they really pushed the cotton production. Yeah, the original colonies were under the control of the Dutch East India Company, but situate the situation between the colonists and the company that was running the colony um, kept deteriorating uh, as it developed. Obviously, they needed to company had to spend more on an administrative, uh, you know, sort of like courthouses and other administrative buildings, which of it, and being a company, this obviously cut into their profits, so they began overtaxing the, the settlers, and so the, the, the situation between them deteriorated. Um, Uh, which culminated in the settlers appealing to the Dutch monarchy for a special committee to be formed to investigate and help them out. Uh, this special committee produced something known as the Concept Plan of Redress, which was aimed at um, improving relations between the two parties, the settlers and the, um, the company running the colony. <clears throat> this this concept plan of redress the report called for widespread constitutional reforms to the colony which incidentally um, appears to have been the basis for the current for the British government structure now ultimately the commission's appraisal of the Dutch West India, West India Company's administration of the colonies was so bad that the company's charter was allowed to expire and the concept plan of redress was implemented in the colony. <clears throat> anyway, the colony was ceded to Britain in 1814 at the end of the Napoleonic Wars, so the Dutch lost. I'm not entirely sure why this happened, since the Dutch seemed to be on Britain's side during the Napoleonic Wars, but they are quite complicated and it is entirely possible that in the efforts to try and abbreviate all of this, I missed out an awful lot of details. The Napoleonic Wars lasted for about 15 years, so, and involved almost all countries in Europe, so, it's fair to say I missed something. Um, yep, so it was ceded to Britain at the end of, of the Napoleonic Wars. <coughs> but despite slavery being abolished in Britain, during the Napoleonic Wars, it continued in Guyana and across much of the British Empire until the nine, until 1833, when the British government passed an act that began phasing it out across the empire. Now that, that's also the act which also reimbursed all of the slave owners for 
uh, really freeing, freeing the slaves, which obviously they consider to be their property. But Yep, during the Cold War, the US and Britain persistently meddled in the in the country's political development. This seems mainly to have been done at the behest of um, the CIA trying to stop communism from spent, spreading into the country. But the country, the colony, was formally given its independence from Britain in 1966, after the US and Britain got their favoured candidate. Lyndon Burnham in charge in 1964. Now to comment on the British reporter's um, statements, uh, comment, comments on um, the audacity of releasing, what did he say, 2 billion tonnes of uh, CO2 into the atmosphere as a result of burning all of that oil. One hundred and fifty billion dollars worth of oil. Um, I looked up how much the UK had dumped into the how much CO two the UK had dumped into the atmosphere um, since the Industrial Revolution started in seventeen fifty, and this statistic article points to the limit to be the sum to be about seventy eight billion metric tons of CO two. So, 39, yeah, 39 times the amount of CO2 has been released by the UK. I mean, 2 billion is still a significant amount, but when it's, but it doesn't uh, really compare to um, 78 billion metric tons of the UK is dumped into the, uh, atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. Anyway, um, it's okay, isn't it? Yep. Right. Uh, yep, I think I shall leave it there. Until then, oh, the original video I got from uh, Due Distance. Uh, you should probably check them out. They're a, they're a pretty good lefty channel. Anyway, until next time, have a good evening or morning or whatever it is wherever you are. Bye.